What's up guys, Full Stack Jack here. A few videos back, I introduced a Nuxt module that I had built called Nux Mailer. If you haven't seen it, watch that video after this one. I'll link it in the description. In this video, I thought it would be really cool to dive into the internals. I'll show you around the module. I have a pesky little bug that I want it to fix anyways, and I thought it would be a good opportunity for us to look into a Nuxt module. Let's jump into it. So I thought in this video, instead of doing a step-by-step -step tutorial, which there are great ones out there already, and I will link a few in the description, I was going to show you how I went about figuring this stuff out because I think that's very useful in anybody's journey is to know how to learn these kinds of things. Of course, you can watch a step-by-step -step video, but what if you have questions that aren't covered in that video? How do you go about figuring it out? Okay, the first place you always wanna go is the documentation. When the documentation is in the early stages, you're not going to find all of the answers that you need. But of course, you do wanna read it to brush up and make sure you get all, everything you can from it. The next best place to go is of course other successful modules. If they're already listed here, you know that they're good, you know that they work. And then you can go and you can dive into these modules to figure out how they do things and then essentially copy the good parts of what you see. For example, I knew I needed a server heavy module in order to build a mailer module. So the first place I went, because I knew they would have to have server heavy stuff, was to Nuxt off. And then I checked out the repo, and then I looked at the code to figure out how they did things. Because I knew that they were importing on the server, and as you can see, I was already here, and I tried to figure out, okay, how do they do that hashtag import when they're on the server side? And then here is exactly how they do that. Inside of the Nuxt hook Nitro config, they add an alias, and they resolve to their service. Also, to get that sweet, sweet type hinting, they use the add templates, and then they added all of the templates to a types slash auth. Those were the main things that I needed in order to make my app work. So once I figured that out, then I was ready to start. So I ran the little command in order to start the module or to create the module locally. And then I saw, okay, the playground is obviously exactly what it sounds like. It's a playground. The module is already installed here and I can add my config and I can play around with the module as I'm building it, which is awesome. I'm glad they did it this way. Then I basically just wanted to go with great good practices that I already saw. So I added a runtime and then I added everything that I need for the server inside of there. So inside of my module, you'll see it's quite simple as far as the setup goes. I just name the module, the config key, and then I give the minimum compatibility. I don't need any sort of plugin. And then you'll notice this looks very familiar because it is exactly exactly one to one what I saw the other modules doing. I add the mailer to the config so that it can be imported like this. Um, if I go to server, app, email sender, you'll see now I can import it like that. That is because that is because of this line here. And then of course I want people to be able to get the types. So I add all of the types also to the same place they did, which is pretty easy. Another thing that I noticed that they had done was in the server, they added this index, they exported it like so. That took care of getting everything loaded into Nuxt itself. From there, it was essentially create the module. I import node mailer, use runtime config, so that I can set up a default transporter so that it can be used like so. Um, use mailer, you can see how I'm importing here. And I use mailer, and then I can essentially just send in all the stuff I need to send the mail, but I don't actually need to send in a transporter if I'm using SMTP. Now, if I'm using a Gmail transporter, for example, you can see I can add the transporter like so. Going back to the module, so that was the gmail transporter also you can create a custom transporter and whichever transporter is used they all use the same send mail and you can see i first see if there is a custom transporter and if not i use the default transporter and then i send off just like every other node mailer app i send off the mail and then i log out any errors if logging um is enabled well I log out errors no matter what. Now that error, that cryptic error was the issue at hand. Let's open back up the terminal, start the app again, try to send the mail, we're getting that error. 
and the error looks like this. So I thought, let's take care of that live here in the video. Now I catch the error and I send it, but let's let's create a better console log here. If the error dot message includes this string, then I'm going to print out a nicer error. Let me just copy that. We can say, um, we'll use template literal here. Um, and then let's say we'll use the runtime config and we'll get the host here like this. Nope, the host. Check it out, should look a little better now. And could not, um, Nux host is set to mail hog. So hint, so I think this is a little more cryptic and then here could not connect to host is a little bit better and the package json here i need to set it to version 0.10.2 yarn dev build and then npm publish Press enter to go to the browser. I gotta enter a one-time password. And authentication is successful and it has published. Now we can check out NPM. NPM, go to Nuxt Mailer. And we can see the latest is 0.10.2 if you like videos like this don't forget to like and subscribe if you've got any suggestions about other videos let me know i will see you in the next one